Hello friends, this video on surface chemistry part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's understand a new concept called colloids. What are colloids? To understand this, let's like understand the hierarchy. See, for a given mixture, any mixture you see, it can be a homogeneous mixture or a heterogeneous mixture, right? So, homogeneous mixture, that means you take any small portion from any place, it will have uniform amount of substance. Heterogeneous, it is not uniform. For example, if you take small amount from this place and small amount from this place, here you will get a different uh, variety of substance, here you will get different. It's not uniformly distributed. Homogeneous is more uniformly distributed, right? Now, homogeneous can be further classified into three types based on based on particle size. Please note this is a little critical concept. So, based on the particle size. So, if the particle size has diameter more than 1000 nanometers, very big. This is the particle, right? This is particle. All one particle. So the particle is big and the size is more than 100 nanometer, we call it suspension, correct? So the particle is big, more than 100 nanometer, we call it suspension. So these are generally, for example, you take water and mix mud in that, that is suspension because mud particle size is more than 100, is more than 1000 nanometer and generally, if you keep this kind of suspension for a long time, since the particle size are big, they all settle down. So if you keep, uh, if you take water and mud, mix it, keep it for three, four hours, you will see that the mud will settle down. Correct. So these are my suspension. And generally it can be both homogeneous or heterogeneous. For example, now once it is suspended, it is heterogeneous, right? Because you take a sample from here and sample from here, it will be different. But when you actually mix it and you prepare it, that time it is homogeneous. So I will not debate on the fact whether they are homogeneous or heterogeneous because this is something which we are not going to study in this chapter. But just understand suspension is something which has diameter more than 1000 nanometer. Since the particle size is more, even if you create a homogeneous mixture of this, after some time it will settle down. Correct? And you can use a normal filter because the particle size are big. So if you use a filter, all these particles will be in this filter and water will fold up, fall down, come down, right? So you can easily separate them using a normal filter because why the particle size are big. Correct? The next example is, let's say, solution. Solution, the particle size is very, very small. It's less than one nanometer since it is less than one nanometer very small even the light will not be able to scatter right no scattering of light even if you pass the light from here to here since the particle size is so small right this the so small particles will not be able to scatter light also they are almost invisible very very small since they are very small they don't settle because since uh, they are very small, these particles move at a very high speed internally. So, it doesn't settle on its own. Since the particle size is very small, you can't filter this just with a filter paper. Because the filter paper holes are bigger, right? And this particle size is smaller. So, you can't just filter it using a filter paper. A good example is ink and water. In this water, you just add, add uh, let's say, three drops or four drops of ink. Let's say few drops of ink. Then you see this whole water and this uh, few drops of ink are mixed up. It is homogeneous solution. And you can't actually separate ink from that using a normal filter paper. Correct. So that is the example of solution. Now it in between solution and suspension, in between these two extremes, there is something called colloidal. So here the particle size are between suspension and solution. 
they are neither very big nor very small their particle size are of diameter 1 to 1000 nanometer now since they are in between suspension and solution they have a unique property a good example is milk milk in water or fog so they show tindall effect we'll talk about these in the whole whole chapter because this is our uh, star this is our star yeah this is our star this is our star so tindall it shows tindall effect also if you want to separate it you you won't be able to separate using again uh, normal filter paper because the particle size is small it will come out so you need a semi permeable membrane that is generally uh, made from the pig bladder in fact you you can also make a uh, artificial semi permeable membrane also but these membranes are used to separate now these membranes correct so in this whole chapter we will talk about colloid this is just to give you introduction on what is colloid and why we have colloid so if we talk about it once again i do with you this the mixture can be homogeneous mixture or heterogeneous mixture now based on the particle size my homogeneous mixture can be further classified as suspension where the particles are very big you can easily separate them using a normal filter paper if you just keep them for some time it will settle down for example water and uh, sand mixture or water or mud mixture solution the particles are very very small and if you just uh, mix it it won't separate on its own it won't uh, settle down example water and ink in between solution and suspension we have something called colloidal where the particle sizes are neither very small nor very big so the particle size are in between 1 to 100 nanometer and they show special properties like tindall effect drawn in movements we'll talk about that and the membranes they can be separated by using membranes why because the particle size are in range so with this background let's start our chapter on colloids so this colloids it came from a greek word kola iodos so kola means glue and iodos means like that is glue like right this was introduced by graham in 1861 in 1861 graham introduces see he was studying the diffusion of substance in aqueous solution through membranes so what he was doing is we know membrane we have studied this in the last chapter semi permeable membranes so he was studying the diffusion of substance in the aqueous solution through membranes so what he found that there are sub some sub substance which can pass through membranes and sub substance that cannot pass through animal membrane for example he has taken the animal membrane this is my animal membrane so he has seen that if he is using nacl aqueous that is nacl plus water uh, combination right then everything is passed through this membrane but in but instead of this let's suppose he has taken starch and water starch plus water combination so he has seen that water can pass but starch cannot pass something is blocked same thing he tried with milk and water he saw that water can pass through this membrane but milk cannot pass through he tried with gum also gum and some gum water and water solution he tried, saw that water can pass through but gum cannot pass through so he was amazed why why it is happening right in case of nacl water can pass nacl can also pass everything can pass to so we just studying the diffusion of substance to this membranes that's what he was trying to do right so what he did was he gave a term called crystalloid for this case which can pass through semi permeable membrane and he gave this definition of colloid which cannot pass through semi permeable membrane so that is again this is a older definition this is a old definition so in 1861 he observed the diagram observed that some 
aqueous solution can pass through membrane some cannot so we told okay the one which can pass through aqueous solution that will be crystallite and the one which uh, cannot pass through aqueous uh, which which cannot pass through the semi membrane or the animal membrane will be colloid he gave this term but after this a new definition came the new definition of colloid is see this is where they found that there is something different here right then they did more and more experiment and they they, they found that these kind of substance which actually passes through this uh, which cannot pass through the semi parent membrane they show different properties they show tindall effect they show brownian movement right they show electro phoresis we'll talk about this all these things correct so now if you see these the new definition says any aqueous solution actually or any solution which shows all this property are called colloids obviously see this was there this is because again it is difficult to find actually you know whether uh, uh, they are be able to pass through this membrane it is a difficult experiment right you have to find this membrane a little difficult to find again uh, make sure that pass through solu uh, again you have to pass the whole solution through membrane and in the output you get right this filtrate you have to check what is the concentration of starch what is the concentration of water and with that you uh, make a assumption whether it is a colloid or not that's a difficult process finding whether it shows tindall effect or not very easy process finding whether it shows brownian effect or not very easy, easy process finding whether it shows electrophoresis uh, or not very easy process we will show you what is this and thus the new definition of colloids came that anything which shows these properties are colloids right now the question is why are we studying colloids in the chapter of surface chemistry correct what has surface chemistry to do with these things see now as i have told that this colloids are the main reason in the, in the previous slide also we told that it's all about the size right size of the particles so if they have size in a fixed range 1 to 1000 nanometer they are colloid it's all size which actually tells whether it's colloids or not right so these colloids have a huge surface area so they have a peculiar size so they have a, a huge surface area right they have huge surface area because again as i told one particular uh, compound you break into small small compounds the surface area increase here also right they have smaller size so they have good surface area right so they have good surface area per unit mass you can say because of the small size and this huge surface area per unit mass is responsible for all these special properties. actually all these special properties you see is because of the huge surface area we will we'll talk about these three properties in fact more properties and we'll show you how the surface area is responsible for this and that's the reason why you're studying this collides in this surface area chapter so before we study collides um, in a detailed way let's understand these two concepts or these two terms dispersed phase and dispersion medium see the particles of the collides are called dispersed phase for example i have this water and in this let's suppose i have some red uh, any red particle small particles colloidal particles so these red particles if you see are my dispersed phase correct and the medium the whole medium for example i use water here medium is called dispersion medium dispersion medium also sometime called dispersion phase also but typically we will use dispersion phase a dispersion medium for this for example 
in this i have milk and water right so i have more water i have let's say i have one glass of water and in this glass of water this is a glass of water i used let's suppose 20 drops of milk so if you see my water becomes what water becomes my dispersion medium and this milk becomes dispersed phase right more examples i have soap and water so i have this water again okay. most of the case water you will see will be a dispersion medium water so in this i add let's suppose again 30 drops of soap so now the soap becomes dispersed phase and my water here is my dispersion medium correct please remember these two terms dispersed phase dispersion medium so medium is where uh, the whole medium is called dispersion medium where you are dissolving this colloidal particles and the colloidal particles itself are called phase right so just read this dispersed phase is nothing but colloidal, colloidal particle okay thank you Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.